Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will build a simple AC resistive circuit and I will show you the average power and the instantaneous power in this circuit. Okay, so this is MATLAB. Once you open MATLAB, you will see this screen. You need to go to Simulink. And uh, once you click Simulink, you need to select uh, Planck model. And uh, once you select a Planck model, uh, you will have the screen open. So let's maximize it. And first uh, thing you need to do is to save it. And I will save it in, on my desktop and I will name it uh, uh, AC, let's say AC resistive circuit resistive. Okay. And you need to make sure that you don't have spaces in the name of the file because MATLAB doesn't accept spaces. So you can use underscores. So here we have AC resistive. So the first component I need to have is the AC voltage source. So I will go to the library. I will look for Simiscape. Here is Simiscape. Double click, I will scroll down looking for electrical, double click. I will scroll down uh, until specialized power systems, double click, and I will scroll, scroll down until sources. And here we have all types of sources. I need AC voltage source, so I drag it to my model. So once I drag this uh, AC voltage source, it will be in my model. So now I need to modify the parameters here inside the model. I will make the peak equal to 10 volts. The phase angle is zero. I will make the frequency 50 Hertz and do apply and okay. Now I want to select a resistor and this resistor is an RLC branch. So I will go again, same escape electrical and I will go to passives here. And from the passives, uh, I will select this uh, series RLC branch. And uh, in the series RLC branch, I will double click. I will choose the branch type to be R. I will give the value in ohms. Let's say, let's have it three ohms. Apply and uh, OK. You can rename it, for example, and you can say, for example, R is equal to three ohms. Okay, and uh, this voltage is uh, 10 volt. So now I want to measure the current in this circuit. So I need to have measurement device. So either you go uh, through the uh, library once again, or you double click anywhere in the model and you type measurement. So this will be the current measurement that I'm looking for. I'm clicking on it and then I have it. I will connect it in series with the circuit. So that it's positive terminal to the positive terminal of the source and uh, it's negative terminal to the positive terminal of the resistor. And uh, then you complete uh, the circuit. You complete the circuit like this. Now I want to measure the voltage across uh, the source and I want to see the value of the uh, current. So once I have a, 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 an AC circuit, so I need to use the uh, RMS blocks uh, in order to see the uh, mean square, uh, uh, root mean square values. So now I'm connecting this RMS to the output of the current. And in order to see the value of this current, I need to have a display. So this is display and this display will show me the value of the current. In order to be able to run this model, I need of course to have the environmental block. So I will click here, power GUI, and here it is, power GUI. Then I will bring it and have it somewhere in the circuit. You don't need to connect. Actually, there, uh, there is uh, uh, no inputs, no uh, outputs, so you cannot connect anything to it. So now I want to measure the voltage across the uh, source. So I need to have a voltage measurement device. So I'm clicking measurement. So this is voltage measurement device. And here is the voltage measurement device. You need to connect the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative. Again, we need to have RMS block. 
So let me uh, 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 copy this, but I want to make sure that we have the same frequency inside it, which is 50 Hertz for this circuit. So apply OK, and now I will copy it after I modified the frequency, and then I will paste it, and then I will connect it to the voltage source here. And I need also a, a display. So I will copy the display and paste it somewhere, and then I will paste it here. So I uh, here I have the voltage and the, uh, let me just uh, reorganize the circuit. I have the voltage uh, of the source measured here inside this uh, circuit. Okay, so this is uh, my circuit. Okay. So of course you can flip the, uh, all this stuff and have it uh, uh, on the other side uh, up to you. Okay, now I need to have a, a power measurement device in order to measure the power. So I need to click anywhere here again, and uh, I'm clicking measurement. So here is the power measurement device. So again, for the power measurement device, I need two values, two inputs. One input is the voltage before the RMS block and the other input is the current before the RMS block. So this is the current and it is taken before the RMS block. This is very important to have the current before the RMS block. Again, I need to have a display. I copy and paste and uh, make sure that you don't have uh, uh, any RMS block before this display because uh, the power is uh, and not uh, a time domain function here. So we can, and uh, the output of this power measurement device is the power in watts. So this will be the power comma in watts in this circuit, okay? And this will be the current uh, comma amperes in this circuit. And this will be the voltage source Vs uh, comma in volts. So here is uh, the values. So let's run the circuit and see whether it works or not. So we see that we don't have any errors, but we have here 10 seconds and 10 seconds is too much. So let's have only the one period, which is 0 0.02 for a 50 Hertz value. And let's uh, modify the frequency here in the power measurement device and uh, uh, keep uh, delete all the harmonics and the, the DC component and keep only the fundamental component. So the fundamental component here is only one. So other numbers are for other harmonics. So apply okay and I will run it again. And I see now everything looks fine. I see the voltage here, the peak amplitude is 10 volts. So the RMS will be 10 divided by square root of two, which is 7.071. And here is the current, which is uh, uh, 10 volts divided by three, it will be 3.33, the RMS value of which is 2.35. And the power will be the current squared, this number squared times the three, it will be 16.67 watts. Of course, we can also measure the, uh, uh, the uh, reactive power and the reactive power should be zero here because we have resistive circuit and there is no reactive power in the resistive circuit. So uh, now let me just uh, rename it and make it as Q and the comma and the reactive power is measured in volt and they are reactive, so it is in bar. And now if I run the circuit once again, I see that the reactive power is 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 15. So it's actually a zero value. It's actually a zero value. If I select, let's say, uh, if I double click on the uh, uh, display, if I choose uh, band format, if I apply, okay, so I see that it is uh, a zero value. It is a zero value. Okay, so the circuit is now built uh, and I have the active power, I have, uh, or the real power or average power. I have the reactive power. 
I have the RMS voltage, I have the RMS current. So the uh, value of the apparent power will be the product of the uh, RMS voltage times uh, the RMS, uh, 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 the RMS voltage times the RMS current. So let me have one block here, which is product. Product. So this is product, as you see. And uh, in this product block, I will take uh, the RMS value after the uh, uh, RMS block, the RMS value of the current, and I will get the RMS value of the voltage. And uh, I will take one display. So copy, uh, paste, and here we have this display. So this will be the apparent power. This will be the apparent power, which is uh, S. And the apparent power is measured in volt amperes. So the apparent power can be uh, calculated by multiplying the RMS volt uh, current by the RMS voltage. So if I run the circuit, so we see that this is uh, the apparent power. And it, as you see, it's the same as the uh, uh, average power because this is a, a resistive circuit, because this is a resistive circuit. So a resistive circuit, the average power and the apparent power is the same. Okay, now I want to show on the scope the instantaneous power. So let me have a, a scope here. So let me have a scope. And here is the scope. And in this scope, I need to have three inputs. So either you do right click, you can uh, go to signals and ports, number of uh, input ports, you select three, or you double click on the uh, scope and from file, you select number of ports and then you select the three. So I have now three inputs. One input uh, is for the voltage. And the voltage should be uh, after uh, before RMS. So I need the time domain voltage. So it is before the RMS. The other input is for the current and also before the RMS. And the third uh, input should be the product. Again, I need to have a product uh, a block. So here is the product block. And the product block uh, will be the product of the instantaneous voltage and uh, the instantaneous current. The product of the instantaneous voltage and uh, the instantaneous current. And uh, its output will go to the uh, display. So what we do, if you multiply, if you multiply the instantaneous or time domain voltage, which is taken from here, by the time domain current, which is taken from here, it will be the instantaneous power, instantaneous power. So now let's uh, uh, run the circuit. And uh, let's have a look at the scope. Here it is. As you see, we have the three uh, uh, signals because we have here three inputs, yellow, blue, and red. In order to see what are these signals, so we can add the legend. So you can go to view and you can click, uh, click on legend. So here now we will have the legend. The legend says that the uh, yellow one is the product. So this is the product. And this product uh, is actually the instantaneous power. So it will be small p as a function of time. Small p as a function in, of time. And uh, its unit of measurement is uh, what is one. So again, let me see the scope. So it is uh, the value of this uh, product. And we see that we have, uh, uh, so this is the product, this is the instantaneous power. The blue one is the voltage. So here is the voltage measurement. And you remember that the peak was 10. So here is the peak value is 10. And uh, the current measurement is the red. So this is the current. And the current here is uh, 2.3. This is the RMS value. If you multiply this RMS value by a square root of two, it will be something around four. So here is the current 
the peak value something around uh, 4 or 3.8, something like this. So what you need to do is to multiply this number by a uh, uh, square root of 2. So what we see here, what we see here, so we see that this is one period. So let me add the label of the x-axis. So I will go to view configuration properties and I will go to time, check this box uh, and uh, apply. So, okay, so this will be the time and this time is given in seconds. And uh, since the frequency of this uh, uh, source is 50 Hertz, so if you divide one over 50, it will be 0 0.02. So the period is 0 0.02. And this is why we see one period of the voltage and we see one period of the current we see that the voltage and the current are in phase because this is a resistive circuit, but we see two periods of uh, the instantaneous power. So the instantaneous power is a double frequency signal, is a double frequency signal. So once we have only one period here for the voltage and the current, we have two periods for the power. And what we see also, we see that this power is shifted above the x-axis. We have offset, positive offset, and uh, it, its maximum is equal to uh, 33, something like this. And if you take the average of this uh, 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 double frequency uh, signal of this instantaneous power, so it will be 16.67. Uh, so this, the average of this signal, it will be 16. Uh, 67. So uh, the, uh, uh, the instantaneous power by definition is the product is this this yellow signal is the product of the time domain voltage by the time domain current. And the average power, the average power by definition is the average value of the instantaneous power. So if you take the average value of this uh, signal, yellow signal over one period or over two periods, you will see that it is 16.67. Reactive power here is zero because we have a resistive circuit and there is no reactive power in a resistive circuit. And uh, the apparent power is the square root of uh, the average power square plus the reactive power square, which will be the same 16.67 or you can calculate it by multiplying, sorry, by multiplying, we can calculate it by multiplying the RMS current by the RMS voltage. So the product of the RMS current and the RMS voltage will give you the apparent power as uh, well, as well. So this is how to calculate the instantaneous power, apparent power, and uh, 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 reactive power in a simple AC resistive circuit. And uh, the last thing we need to calculate is the power factor. And the power factor by definition is P over S, is P over S. So it is the active power or real power or the average power divided by the apparent power. And if you divide 16.67 by 16.67, it will be one. So the power factor for a resistive circuit is equal to one, which is uh, a unity power factor, which is a unity power factor. And this uh, is confirmed by that the two uh, signals, the voltage and the current are in phase, which means that the phase shift between them is equal to zero. And the phase shift between them is the power factor angle. So the power factor angle is equal to zero. And we know that the power factor is the cosine of the power factor angle. So it will be cosine of zero and cosine of zero is equal to one. So this is how to build a, a simple uh, uh, AC resistive circuit to show the active power, the average, uh, the reactive power and the apparent power and the instantaneous power on the uh, scope, the instantaneous power on the scope.